deli meat, pricey, overpriced. I don't like it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take this uh, crazy big pork loin here and I'm going to try to make a, a, a deli ham out of this essentially that we can have on sandwiches and all kinds of stuff. So come along for the ride. So this is a four and a half kilogram pork loin here. Nice, sizable, going to result in a lot of awesome meat. And my first step is just to pop it out of this bag and I'm going to uh, get rid of this bag here. Get this all padded dry with some paper towel and get it onto my cutting board. So I've got this all padded dry and that's really just to kind of help make it so I don't make a big mess of everything here. Now it's funny, this was like less than the length of this cutting board before and now that I've got it out it's really sort of stretched out a little bit. We'll try to cram it together here. Um, now that this is dry I'm going to go ahead and just remove, um, it's kind of sad to remove this fat but it's concealing some silver skin and uh, tissue in here that's just really not going to be pleasant in a finished product and I don't want to have any kind of weird chewiness here that's taking away from the experience that I'm after. So I'm just going to use this really nice long sharp knife of mine here to clean all of that off. And see right here this is a good example where I put a, pulled away a little bit of that fat and now we've got this uh, silver skin on here. That, under here that is just, it's chewy, it doesn't break down and we're not actually going to be cooking this anyway so we wouldn't even have an opportunity to do so. All right, so that will do it for that, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut this into half because that will make it far more manageable. I can get this into vacuum seal bags um, to cure quite a bit easier. So I'm going to get a quick weight on both of these so that I can measure out my cure and my seasonings and spices. So we're keeping the cure really quite simple here. I'm going with 0.25% of cure number one or nitro cure or prog powder number one. It's the sodium nitrite. Here it's one for, for quicker turnarounds. I'm going with 2.2% of salt. You can go with either kosher salt or pickling salt as long as there's no iodine or anything uh, weird like that in there, any additives. Um, I've got 2% uh, of brown sugar. I'm going with golden brown sugar this time around. And then I'm going to be firing this into a spice blender. I've got 0.08% of uh, juniper berries in here. I have 0.06% of dried whole rosemary, and then 0.3% of some black peppercorns. And they are just going to go right in this former coffee grinder here, I'll pop them in, just because I want to bust those berries and everything up. There, and it doesn't have to get into like a, a complete powder, but I'm getting fairly close, just for a little bit more even distribution throughout. So we'll put that into there, and then I'm just going to give it a nice mix. And this is going to go, once this is all mixed up, we're going to get it all over our pork. So we've got our nice, beautiful cure blend here. I'm going to go, and I love using the meat tub for this because you can Go ahead and make a little bit of a mess, be splashy with it, rub it all in, and then still scoop everything into the bag when you're done. A nice coating over all this meat and over the ends. Just ran out. Scoop some here. Get it all over that. And then we've got our vacuum bags. Just gonna slide this over here. And can't really see it all that well with the angle we're using, but we're just popping that into a vacuum bag. Awesome. All right, once that's in the vacuum bag, I'm just going to get as much of this Cure Blend over here. Again, because everything's being done by weight, it's awesome because it's not possible to over cure by time-wise. Awesome. Just going to go ahead and put that in. 
Fabulous. Okay, so I'm going to quickly do the same thing with the second piece of meat here, and then we will vacuum seal these. Okay, so I also try to take this, like the extra cure that's in there, and kind of shoot it around just a little bit in here, so it's all not just one big pocket somewhere. We'll do this vacuum bag. I also like to double seal the bags here, boom, boom, just to prevent any possible leaking situations, because that would be a mess. And I do like to cut this off just shy of making that uh, really tight um, vacuum in there because I give just a little bit of wiggle room for the, the juice and the cure and stuff to make its way around um, during this curing phase over the next while. So now that both of these are sealed up, I just went ahead and wrote um, what I've got on here as well as the date. And these are now going to go in the fridge. So it has been three and a half weeks. Um, yeah, just over three and a half weeks of curing time, which is more than I needed time-wise for this meat. Um, however, it just kind of worked out for my schedule. And it uh, you can't really over-cure with time um, when you're doing this equilibrium curing method of weighing everything out right to the ground. Very, uh, very precise, not only with your salt, but most importantly with your cure. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, rinse these off. The nice thing too about leaving it a little bit longer is like all of, uh, all of the extra seasonings and herbs and stuff in here um, just have that extra time to really hopefully penetrate the meat. So now I want to rinse everything off here. Okay, I'm not worried about getting every tiny little scrap of uh, pepper, corn, or, or whatever off of here. It's really just to make sure that you're washing off any of that cure juice and what have you. So uh, now I'm going to get these out. I'm going to just dry out this tub. I'm going to pad these all nice and dry, and then we can let uh, a little pellicle formation take place. Now that these are padded dry, I've just got them on this rack in the meat tub in my garage. I'm uh, fortunate enough that... Uh, over uh, the next few days, this garage is going to be essentially at refrigerator temperature, which is perfect, uh, not only for this time for pellicle formation, but then also for off-gassing after I go ahead and smoke these. I also have a couple extra uh, pork loin chunks here that I'm using just to make my pork loin hams, uh, just the regular hams that I like to use and cook up and have with scalloped potatoes and fun stuff like that. So I'm going to be making great use of the cold smoke uh, process tomorrow. The next morning I've got these hams here in the brick smoker and I'm going to get my pellet tube smoker going here so that we can get these some cold smoke. So that tube smoker is fired up here and I'm using um, a competition blend of pellets. It's oak, hickory and cherry which I think will be really, really nice on these hams. So, time to let them sit. After about six hours of smoke coming out of this pellet tube smoker, I've just reloaded it, and I'm going to give these hams another round. Uh, my buddy dropped off one that he had made here as well, so now we've got three of these deli hams going. Awesome. After just about 11 hours of smoke here, these hams of both varieties, are ready to come out so I'm going to take them and just get them into the meat tubs and we can let them hang out overnight in the garage. After a night in the garage I've got these hams here and for my next step I've got this big vacuum seal bag. I've got this double sealed. I'm going to do that at both ends. I'm just going to grab this line here, slide it on in Smells so good, beautiful and smoky. Mm. I want to eat it right now. It's not quite ready. So I am going to throw a second uh, seal on this here in just a second, but I'm going ahead and doing this because we're going to cook this ever so gently in a hot water bath with my uh, precision cooker. It's sous vide time. And I'm going to be cooking this pork loin ham here. 
at 140 Fahrenheit, and I'm going to be letting it do that for right around three hours or so. And the idea here is to be able to go ahead and um, cook this, get the texture how I want it, uh, while still retaining maximum moisture, because with this uh, sous vide process, uh, it's going to um, lose very, very little by way of its moisture that it currently has. So I'm just going to go ahead and tent this with foil and give it a few hours. So three hours have passed. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to just chill it down, get it into some really cold water here and then get it into the fridge. This loin was in the fridge overnight. It's nice and chilled down, firm. Uh, I'm going to cut it open and I can see like there's some of that liquid and stuff that did come out of the pork during that fun little hot tub experience. So I'm going to actually grab some paper towel, I think. I'm just gonna lay it down here. And I'm going to clean this off. It's, it's a little gelatinous, the stuff that came out of there. But let's see, whoo, smells delightful. Nice and smoky. Hmm. Cannot wait to see how this tastes. So I'm just going to keep uh, patting this off here, getting all of that liquid off. I was tempted to maybe rinse it off, but I think we'll get away with it just, just like this, rather than taking it to the sink. These little marks from the, the smoker rack. All right. I think there we are. Okay, let's get this in the slicer. So you missed my cry of joy when I just cut this loin in half and uh, saw what it looked like on the inside. That looks, looks perfect. Now, what I'm really curious about here is the texture and the flavor. So I'm going to use my Aventu slicer here. And I want these to be a little bit thicker, I think. I'll put it on the two setting and see what that looks like. Just like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's Let's have a little taste. Please don't judge my amazing November mustache here. Um, okay, first of all, let's take a look. Oh, held together quite nicely. Definitely different texture than than we see with uh, like the store bought deli ham because that's like packed full of, of water and phosphates and who knows what else. Yeah. Mm. So I find this is reasonably similar to the, the pork loin hams that I like to make um, just for cooking and eating with, I'm going to keep eating this, with scalloped potatoes. It's really nice, moist. It's just uh, just enough smoke that um, I find it super delicious and the kids are gonna, going to really enjoy it. It'll go super well on, on sandwiches, which was really the point of this. Mm. Okay, so I'm... <laughs> okay, I'm done eating. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slice up enough of this that I can package up and the kids can eat this um, for the week. And I think then what I'll do is I'll take the rest, the rest of the uh, ham and just uh, of both of these loins and go ahead and vacuum seal it in chunks. And then I think each week I'll just pull it out, slice what I'm going to need up for the week and that way it'll um, just kind of keep easier and probably be less likely to dry out and stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna slice some up here. Woo! And there we are. Nice little pile of meat. I'm gonna calculate and figure out how many I need for the week and uh, go from there. I'm gonna go ahead and call this a win. I couldn't help but lay this out all nice and pretty like here. I think this is a great way to take this really quite inexpensive cut of meat, make a super nice, lean, but moist, delicious, ready to eat, sliced uh, meat product, meat product, that sounds delightful, that you can go ahead and make some awesome sandwiches out of. The kids are thrilled, and yeah, I'd say definitely give it a whirl if you have a chance, and until next time, keep it at 11.